I want to continue talking about these end times that we live in. <clears throat> we have an election coming up on Tuesday. And uh, uh, the song that we sang today, Why Do the Nations Rage? When God is still on the throne. Doesn't make any difference. God is still on the throne, isn't he? And that's, that, that's a, a very comforting, hopeful thing that we have. Um, I, I want you to stand as I read from Matthew 24, just to honor God's word. Those of you that can stand, I'd like you to do that. And uh, I'm going to be starting in Matthew chapter 24, verse 3. As he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us when will these things happen, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? He answered and said, See to it that no one misleads you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will mislead many. You will be hearing of wars and rumors of war. See that you are not frightened, for those things must take place, but that is not yet the end. And, and last week, there were three attitudes I wanted you to think of. One was to stay focused, stay consistent, stay Christ-like. So stay focused. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, right here in my life, not to get all spazzed out with everything that's going on. Stay consistent. Continue that faithful plodding on in Jesus Christ. And then stay Christ-like in every situation. Express Jesus to everyone around us. Express Jesus to your mind. There's times when we have to stay Christ-like up here, don't we? And so as we looked at those attitudes, we also talked about from, from uh, Matthew 24, there's two things that I read to you. One of them was, don't be deceived by many. Don't be misled. And the other one was, do not fear. And so I want us to pray. Father, speak to us through your word. Guide our thoughts. Holy Spirit, have your way. Minister to our spirit, our mind, and help us, O oh God, to agree with you. In the mighty name of Jesus, and everybody said, Amen. You can be seated. You know, if you look on the internet today, you can find all kinds of conflicts. All kinds of them. Conflicts here in our country, conflicts in neighborhoods, conflicts in communities and cities, conflicts around the world, conflicts with nations against nations. And, and we can get so distracted by that that we forget something very important. God's on the throne. Doesn't make any difference what man does. What the nations say, God is still on the throne. Now, as we consider this, I, I want us to take a look at um, the life of King David. Um, David was a shepherd boy out taking care of the sheep. Uh, he had rescued them from a lion, from a bear. I, I can't imagine a 12 or 13-year-old kid being able to kill a lion and a bear. Anybody here done that? I didn't think so. You have, Elijah? We have a lot to talk about. But he was minding his business. He was pretty much thrown out to take care of the sheep. His brothers were busy being men, men of war. And, and yet it came down to this, that when God was looking for a new king, Samuel the prophet went and went through all of the lineup of the boys. He said, there must be another one. And he said, well, there's... There's the kid, he's, he's out in the shepherd, he's out in the, with the flock in the pasture. We'll bring him in. And they brought him in and he said, God said, that's the king. And when he was anointed by Samuel and the oil dripped down upon his head, there was an instant conflict that David was thrown into and that was he would become an enemy of the king, King Saul. Now King Saul had had given his daughter to David because of his valiant uh, battling for the kingdom. And, and so, in essence, King Saul was his 
brother-in-law or his father-in-law. And David was his son-in-law. But there was enmity that came, and the eventuality was is that Saul tried to kill David. Now, I need to reassure my son-in-laws, I will never try to do that. Okay? I am for you. We pray for you daily, my wife and I pray. Bless them as men of God. Help them to lead their families. Help them to be good husbands and, and fathers and, and, and to make choices for your kingdom. That's, that's how we pray for our son-in-laws and our daughters and our grandkids too. So David had this experience of going from fighting lions and bears to fighting the king and, and those that were loyal to the king. And David fled for his life many times. And David would write about those things in the songs that he wrote, in the Psalms. And in Psalm 124, if you'll turn there, I want us to take a look in this. Because this is what we're going to focus on for the next couple of minutes. Psalm 124, verse 1, it says, Had it not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, had it not been for the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us, David definitely knew what it meant to have people rise up against him. Verse 3, Then they would have swallowed us alive when their anger was kindled against us. Then the waters would have engulfed us. The stream would have swept over our souls. The raging waters would have swept over our souls. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us to be torn by their teeth. God will never, never give us over. He will constantly defend us and help us no matter what we go through. Verse 7 says, Our soul has escaped as a bird out of the snare of the trapper. The snare is broken and we have escaped. And then verse 8 is the verse I want us to focus on. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. We say that again. Our help, isn't it good that David included us? Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. The Message Bible says this, God's strong name is our help. The same God who made heaven and earth. And I want us to consider today our help. Our help today. We all need help in the day and age we live in. And God has helped us. Now there are sheets that are put into your, into your offering slots in front of you, or should be. They're white folded sheets. And they're a list of names that, that uh, we've given out before, but... Surely now is a time where we need to remember the name of the Lord. Because that's where our help is, is in the name of the Lord. And it's remembering who He is. And so you're going to help me to, to preach this sermon today. And as we consider these, these names that God has, has given to us, our help is in His character, and His character is expressed through His name. So I want to invite you to, to just share just a, a quick testimony. Um, realize we have a time constraint. Our help is in the name of the Lord. And the first one here, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, our provider. How many of you have seen God be your provider? Raise your hand. Ron, just real quick, stand where you're at. I know those of you that are streaming, uh, I'll try to repeat what Ron says after he says it. But uh, how has your help in the name of the Lord been expressed to you as he has been your provider? Well, at the beginning, uh, months ago, uh, Dorothy got a job at the uh, David Post office. That was a gift from God. In five months, I was unemployed and uh, living on unemployment. And by just recently, about a month ago, Hallelujah. So God provided a job for Dorothy back at the post office. And then you were out of work for five months. And then God provided a job for you. And, and during those five months, you guys are probably biting your nails going, how are we going to make the money stretch? No, Dorothy's shaking her. No. What's that? 
He always provided. So your help is in the name of the Lord Jehovah Jireh. Hallelujah. Thank you for sharing that. Praise God. Our help is in the name Jehovah Jireh. What need do you have that he can't meet? Our help is in the name. The next one here. Our help is in the name of the Lord Jehovah Rohi. The Lord who heals. Is there anybody here that you have seen God heal? Go ahead, my sister, with the lovely, beautiful, crowning gray hair that you have there. Oh, look, we have a microphone coming to you. Actually, I wanted to do a full testimony, but a lot of you know this past, well, the end of the winter, as the COVID was first coming in, I landed in the hospital. They weren't sure if I had COVID or what. Turned out I had pneumonia. And long story short, when I finally came out of the drugs and whatnot, I heard a voice say, you were dying. I healed you. Hallelujah. And I kind of, me being me, yeah, right. And then I heard again, you were dying. I brought you back. Mm. And then down the road, my doctor told me they almost lost me twice. Mm. So the Lord definitely healed me and brought me back. Hallelujah. Thank you, Debbie. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who is our healer. That's where our help comes from. Our help is in the name of the Lord, Jehovah Nissi. God is our banner. He, he is the one that is overshadowing and covering us in every battle we go through. How many of you have had a testimony where you can say, God has been my protector in the battle that I've been going through? Would you raise your hand? Amen. Brother back there, go ahead. Elijah? So, uh, the Lord's given me uh, opportunities at work where there's been conflict and uh, tension to just intercede and pray and ask him. And uh, One night, I was just led by the Lord. The uh, person I was working with said, oh, you need to ask for forgiveness because you offended me. And and I tried to apologize, and they were like, not right now. You just want my parts. I'm like, okay. So I came back a couple of days later. I prayed about it, and I really didn't want to do it, but I felt like the Lord wanted me to humble myself and just trust him. So I did, and it really opened a door for peace in my work atmosphere mm. to just, it transformed the relationship from a tension to uh just being able to see that God, God was working in this person's life, and God was working in my life, and Hallelujah! Just brought peace. Praise God, Jim. Thank you so much. God is good. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Our banner. Amen. The next one here is, our help is in the name of the Lord Jehovah M Kadesh, the Lord who sanctifies, who makes us holy. Anybody here, you can testify that God has helped you to walk in holiness and grow in holiness. Anybody? Hallelujah. Somebody, Peter, is that you trying to, trying to praise God? Elijah, I'm going to put you on the spot, brother. You better pray somebody raises their hand. No, oh, besides Jim, I want to get I want to get some other people. Sorry, brother, I'm not trying to steal your thunder, but but uh, someone else. Okay, Elijah, I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> um, just you know, growing up in the church and trying to trying to act, you know, the part and do the part, and then like my teenage years, I you know got into stuff. And I, you know, I just was going through the motions. I would show up to church. I do all the activities and just going through all the motions. And God said that you need to, you need to submit yourself to me, all of yourself to me. And um, it's a daily struggle. Like a thing I got to do daily is when I get up in the morning, I have a half hour drive. So on that drive to work, I, I spend time in prayer. I say, God, I give you all of myself today. So it's just a daily thing of trying to make myself holy before God. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord who sanctifies us. 
He's the one that speaks to us and helps you have a drive a half an hour and you're able to say, God, everything, I just surrender it to you. Aren't you glad that, that we don't have to sanctify ourselves? That God is the one that sanctifies us, that he speaks to us and, and helps us to walk in that constant um, tension, I would say, of not being like the world, but being like Jesus. And that's a constant tension. There's a battle that goes on, but God is cheering us on to be separated, to be sanctified for his holy purposes. doesn't mean that we're aloof and I don't want to talk to you or get dirty from you. It's not anything like that. It's, it's making a choice to say, God, I want to be holy unto you so that I can do what you want me to do for your glory, reaching out to people, sharing with people, loving people, and uh, helping people. That's what sanctification is all about. Our help is in the name of the Lord, and his name is Jehovah Shalom, God our peace. How many moms here have appreciated God being your peace when things were blowing out at home? Yeah? Amen? Okay. Dawn, I'm going to put you on the spot. Okay? <clears throat> the Lord has really shown me, um, he's given me more of his names than just peace, but he did tell me that he's established his peace in my heart and in my spirit from the very beginning. And one was when I was very distraught and, and I felt like Harry was the one <laughs> that I was supposed to Mary and I came home and I was just churning inside and um, I immediately, when I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, is he the one? I immediately had a peace and, the God, and God came in and gave me his peace and, and um, he showed me every single time that I've had um, churning and upsetness when his peace comes in, I know he's come into the situation and he's going to change it. It has been so cool because he is the God of peace and, and the Holy Spirit is our peace and Jesus is our peace and God is peace. The three of them, and, and they will show you themselves in a situation when they come in, in peace. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, Jehovah Shalom. Now, I'm going to give people online an opportunity. We won't be able to read it unless some of you are tuned in live streaming. But these last several that are mis, uh, mentioned here, um, Jehovah Sid Kinu, the Lord our righteousness, the one who declares us righteous. How many of you have been thankful that God has come in when there's been times of self-incrimination and the devil's allowed you to beat yourself up, smack you in the face, you're no good, you'll never make it, you're such a failure, and God says, don't call clean what I have called clean. God does that. He did it to Peter. Peter was hungry. He's on the rooftop. He had a sheet come down. There were unclean animals, clean and unclean. And God said, kill and eat. Peter went, I'll never do that. I'll never eat anything unclean. And God said, don't call unclean what I have called clean. And there's times when God comes in and he is our righteousness. And he says, I'm the one that has declared you righteous in right standing with me. Who do you think you are? to try and say that you're not in right standing. We can beat ourselves up terribly. Some of you online, would you make a comment about how God has been your righteousness? And then moving on here to the next one. Our help is in the name of the Lord, Jehovah Rohi, the Lord our shepherd. Hallelujah. How many of you have been thankful that God has been the shepherd, the great shepherd? Jesus said this, the great shepherd leaves the 99 and goes after the one rascal. How many of you have been rascals? You've done your own thing. You've, you've departed from the way. And then the great shepherd said, I'm not giving up on you. I'm going after you. And he has. He's He's persisted in his love and he's, and he's drawn us and wooed us to the place where here we are today, sitting in the sanctuary, watching live stream, 
We're one of his sheep, and even though we ran the other way when we heard the voice of the shepherd, he pursued us and he brought us back into his sheepfold. Our help is in the name of the Lord, Jehovah Rohi. And then the last two here, Jehovah Shama, the Lord is there. Aren't you glad that God's presence is with us regardless of what we go through? Even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, in Psalm 23, I fear no evil because thou art with me. Hallelujah. No matter what we go through, God is with us. And so some of you online, would you go ahead and give a comment, a testimony of how the Lord has been with you. Our help is in the name of the Lord, Jehovah Sabaoth the Lord of hosts. And it's really saying he is, he is the supreme commander of the angelic armies. Now you think about this. One angel destroyed 186,000 men in one night. One angel. One angel toppled an a, a idol in front of the Ark of the Covenant Eventually snapped the head off of it. There were angels that spoke. And God commands those angels. As a matter of fact, the Bible talks about ministering spirits, ministering angels to those who are heirs of salvation. And, and God has given holy assignment to the angels to help us. That's who Jehovah Sabaoth is. He dispatches angelic beings to help God's children. And some of you online would comment about God has been your help by being the Lord of hosts, the angelic beings. Our help is in the name of the Lord. And then the third part I want us to take a look at is very significant. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. He created everything. I would say he is absolute in his authority and power. There's nobody above him. It doesn't make any difference what nation disavows the presence of God or any individual that says, I don't believe in God. It doesn't make any difference. God's still in charge. He still sits on the throne as absolute authority our Redeemer, our Creator. Hallelujah. There's no one like Him. Think about this. Our help is in the name of the Lord. All of these things that we've talked about, His name, His, His titles. And the last one is Creator of heaven and earth. Hallelujah. That's who our help is in. Same God who made the vast heavens made the earth. Think about the smallest living thing. I, I've, uh, I've tried to keep up with biology to some degree. I, I enjoy the study of living things and enjoy those classes when I was in school. And so I do some reading from time to time on biology. And some of, it's amazing the one-celled creatures that there are. And God knows every movement, everything that they're doing right now while he's watching every one of us. And God knows every hair that's falling out of your head. <laughs> he's got them all numbered. And he's got all the stars named. That's the God that we serve. From the smallest thing to the biggest thing. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Aren't you glad that's, that's a declaration to us today? Psalm 124, verse 8. David declared it, and he included us by saying, our help. Not my help, but our help. That's ours. So let's close in prayer. Would you stand with me? Heavenly Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters, and I thank you that our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth and and it's in your name that we find your attributes. 
You're the shepherd. You're the healer. You're the God that's there. You're the God that declares us, us righteous. You made the heaven and earth. You're our provider. Oh God, you're our peace. And that's where our help comes from and, and we'll declare it to principalities and powers. Our help is not in our arm of flesh or our reasoning. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. And that's where we find our confidence, our refuge and our hope. Bless, bless, bless my brothers and sisters. Guide them this week, this First day of the week, we set in order everything in our life that it will bow and kneel to the Lordship of Jesus Christ and to God the Father and to the Holy Spirit. And our confidence is in your name, O God. Thank you for declaring over Jesus through the prophet Isaiah he is a wonderful, he's a counselor, he's almighty God, he's the everlasting father, he's the prince of peace. There's so many names that you have allowed us to learn. May we constantly grow in understanding that our help comes from the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. I pray, O oh God, for our nation. I pray, O oh God, for the people of this nation I pray for the people of this world that they would find that their help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Use us, O oh God, to declare your name to those around us. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. And everybody said, amen. God bless you. Have a great week. Thank you for being here today. Take those papers with you. And you know what? If if there's somebody you'd like to give one to, just pick up any of the spares, take them with you, and maybe there's somebody that you can share the thoughts that were shared today. God bless you. Pastor David and Pastor Andy.